Good afternoon. My name is Jay Rothman and welcome to Real People, Real Stories, Raw. I am excited to bring this live streaming show to you today with a guest coming in from Leed, England. Leed, the UK. Uh, is it Leed or Leeds? Leeds is my hometown. Leeds, welcome to the studio. I own a mead known as the Soul Legacy Movement. Uh, I've got that in your title there. I added that while we were chatting before the show. As we wait for some people to uh, to join us on this live, what I'm going to do is actually share it out in a couple of different channels, including the Hay House uh, Global uh, Community and other spaces. But uh, welcome to the studio. I know for you right now, it's uh, it's just a little bit off after 9 p.m. Yes, it is. Thank you Thank for you. giving up your evening. Ah, oh, no problem whatsoever. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited for this conversation. Well, we were together just uh, just about a week or so ago, actually over a week, last Wednesday. Yes. I was invited to be a guest on, on your show. Yeah. And I graciously accepted and I, I had a lot of fun. And it's not that often uh, that I do interviews. Um, I'm usually right here in this seat on this side of the table. Yeah. and uh, or the camera and uh, and so when an invitation comes I, I don't turn it down and so I was I really enjoyed uh, spending the time with you and ESA's and uh, it was a great interview and I extended the invitation I figured you know what if you're gonna put me on a hot seat that I have to at least um, offer the same back to you and so you in fact agreed to come into the studio today and I got ESA's coming in this Sunday is she so, wow yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah of course you know when somebody extends that invitation it's like okay I can do this but I feel that same thing being a host and then when you come on and you know it's just having that conversation you and I have that style where we just simply have a conversation and I love sharing what I do I love connecting so um, I'm looking forward to having a conversation and sharing with you guys beautiful Beautiful. So the way I'd like to begin with you is uh, just a little history. You and I met um, earlier this year. Um, yes. It may have even been towards the end of last year. And initially, I had invited you to be a guest on my show because I read a post of yours that uh, it had to do with your, your backstory. And um, I believe it, it had to do with perhaps the loss of your son, your son's passing. And it really, it really struck me and I reached out to you and I invited you on a show. And then the timing was such that it was not the right time for you. You were going through, uh, I think some, some things at the time uh, as it related to just the, the, the continuation of, of, uh, of working through the process of, of your life and, and uh, the changes that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. And so um, out of nowhere, uh, two weeks ago, you reached out to me and said, well, I'd like you to be a guest on my show. And I was so pleasantly surprised and I was so glad to, to see that you are back and you are, you've got a new show that you launched. And uh, I'd like you to spend just a few minutes kind of touching on that and then we'll, then we'll go back in time. Oh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, the post, I, it probably was the end of last year. And um, I posted in a group, um, about my son's passing, for, for those of you who are new to me, uh, it was about four and a half years ago, um, I got a phone call to say that my son had had an accident, he'd been knocked off his motorbike. And obviously no mama wants to hear that. And so it just sent me in a tailspin. I was actually on a call, a call being in service and um, I had to phone the emergency services. It was a very confusing time for me and they couldn't give me much information. And um, at first the lady said, yeah, sure, you know, I'll find out. And then her tone had changed and she kind of said, I can't give you that information. So I said, okay. So I rang my mum like you do in a panic. And then my son's girlfriend rang uh, my granddaughter's mum and said, he didn't make it he, he passed away on the roadside so I didn't get to say goodbye to my baby boy that was 12 days before his 20th birthday so I was in the middle of I host the show the Soul Legacy TV podcast and radio show the Soul Legacy movement 
hence that name, I dedicate my work to my son. So that post was me coming back online and feeling my way after taking time out. So at the time of my son's passing, I was hosting a show, a 49, what I called a soul speaker summit called the number one divine intervention virtual event. I did not know that I would go through the biggest divine intervention in my life. It was a crazy time for me to, that's an understatement. So I fulfilled the event. I fulfilled my work online for about a year and Jay, I, I took time off. I came offline to help heal myself first. So when we first connected, that was that time where I was like, okay, I'm ready to reflect on my journey and bring in what I'd learned. I'd helped and healed myself first. And I had mapped out the show and I was like, yes, this is how it's going to be. Turns out I had with ECs as well, ECs I'd connected with her and we had mapped out, we were going to co-host and we were going to do all these things. And it just wasn't the model that it is now. It was called the Soul Income Injection Movement. And it was the old company that I had, the Soul Speakers Academy. And that literally had to die to birth the Soul Legacy Academy. And it feels aligned. It feels amazing. And it's what, what fuels me. Um, it, it's what gets me out of bed in the morning. Well, uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, that, that piece of your story. I, I do want to take a moment here to just honor you and thank you for having the courage to come in today. I was not aware until pre-show when we were in conversation in the studio and you shared that this is the first live streaming show you are doing in the four year period. And so for me that it, it just changes everything. It, it just, um, it just changes my, my level of um, really just uh, respecting you and, and really wanting to truly provide this safe environment for you to hold your space with you and for you uh, so, that, uh, so that you are at ease. And at any time during this hour, uh, if, I, if a question should pop up from within and you're not ready to, to answer it or to go there, with love, you can set a loving boundary and I will with love respect you for that. And so um, I would like to, uh, I'd like to invite you to go back because I think that uh, the loss, your son's passing uh, was really not the beginning of your story. No. There is, there is, there was way more that was, that had taken place in your life prior to, to that major event. Mm -hmm. I'd like to invite you to kind of go back to the period in your life where that you're comfortable with um, and, and then we'll come forward back to today. Thank you. So there was a time um, and I talked about that on that post where I, ha I was married uh, to my ex-husband ex now and we got married on Cocoa Beach. I live in the UK so we traveled out to the States, got married, bought a house the next year, and had soft up cars and holidays, and inside felt like a lonely, empty mess. And we had grown apart. I had grown and had experiences. I came across the law of attraction and coaching and just self-reflection and signs that were in my life at the time. And you know, you ignore those nudges. And so I made a decision to split but it wasn't an easy decision because it meant that I then no, I didn't have a home um, and I had my children and it was a time it went, we went through about a four year period of turmoil, turmoil and chaos. And I was trying to build my business online. And one of the things that I come back online with um, is that being honest and open about where you are when you're there I was struggling, I was struggling behind closed doors. And one of the things that fuels me in leaving a legacy now is back then I was experiencing, um, I went through bankruptcy, homelessness, all these things. And the emphasis in our industry is, you know, build a list and the money will come. And I felt like the effect of that, like I wanted to be treated like a real human being. I wanted somebody to help me. It was when I needed the help the most, right? And I was outpriced on stuff. And I was just like, where do I turn? Where do I go? 
And so, like I said, I ended up bankrupt and homeless. And I, I was featured in a book called Empowered Women of Social Media. And that was one of the turning points for me. And I wrote about rising above adversity and prosperity. And I did go bankrupt. I was advised to go bankrupt. And at that time, I decided to write a book to actually work on myself. And then Empowered Women of Social Media came. So we became number one bestseller on Amazon and I co-authored co with 44 women. What That's year was I, this? What year this, was this? This was 2014. So how, I, long, how long had you and your husband been married at that, when you decided to leave? Oh, uh, so we were together three and a half years. Okay. Um, we got married on Cocoa Beach in 2007. So, and then we moved and then we were together for till late 2008. So we were together first and then 2008, nine. And that few years was just absolutely insane. <laughs> it was just, it was just crazy. So I was figuring out, I was doing coaching. I realized that people also had the same experiences that I had. We went through coach training school. I was working um, and trying to build a business which was holistic coaching for women. And I had no idea about business. I had no idea about marketing. I had no idea about the money stuff. I had resistance to all of it. So when I transpired that I split from my, I didn't have a way to take care of my family. So hence the, the bankruptcy. And I was trying to figure it out what's going online and all this stuff. And so, when I was doing the book, I realized I couldn't do it alone. So hence the number one divine intervention virtual event, I actually created, I did close to a hundred interviews with what I call joint vision partnerships. Um, and I moved away from list building in the industry to actually building the vision. Like we are building, we have a similar vision to help and heal ourselves first and then to support others in that. And I've, believe that the energy of conversation rather than the energy of just building content needed to be born. And so when, just before my son passed, he, he was there, he came and said, oh, well done, mom, you know, cause we've become number one bestseller. And that's when I got that phone call and um, not long after. So that was October, November, and then the April, my, my son passed. So I was in the middle of launching. So I did another year. I filled out my, my um, with my students, my boot camps and different things. And then I came offline to help and heal myself first, um, which has been a journey that has been dark nights, as you can imagine, but into the light of my soul and just really living an intentional life. Because as you can imagine, when something like that happens, you think, what is life all about? Why am I here? What is it that I want to bring to the world? And hence that leaving and living and leaving a legacy. What is what is an intentional life mean so to you? So intentional living for me. So I had split for my husband and I went through, I had another seven year relationship, which was quite toxic really, but you don't kind of really put those pieces when something's a little bit better than what you've had it's like okay this is the path so my partner and I now Barry he's amazing he's my sole partner in business life and marketing and um, we had both been in two long-term relationships which prepared us for now and when we met we had instant soul recognition and so that's like 19 months ago and so when we were merging our life so I've got my son and my daughter, my granddaughter, and Barry's got four children. We wanted to live our life intentionally, set intention and create a life, not by accident or by default. We wanted to design it. So we actually, if you're familiar, if you guys are familiar with the wheel of life, we actually um, did a wheel of life. It's like, how do we balance? Because we didn't live together. We lived about an hour away. So we every, every moment was really precious and our children just showing them how to live a healthy, have a healthy relationship and a healthy life was really important to us. So we did a wheel of life and had a look at each area of our life and wanted to set intentions and goals. 
And then as we've been working for like about a year together on like creating the best life that we could, meaning how do we want our life to look and feel? How do we want to show up for ourselves? How do we want to show up for each other? How do we want to show up for our children and live that legacy? In accordance with our biggest values, we created the Soul Legacy Wheels and the Soul Legacy Academy and the Soul Legacy Movement. I want to dive a little bit into, uh, you, you referred to your, when you met your current partner yeah. as um, instant soul alignment. Is that soul, what you're soul recognition. Recognition. Yeah. Okay. So how is that different than meeting someone and falling for them? Let's say in lust or falling in love. For those that may be watching that may not be so familiar with the word soul and your trans your translation understanding of that word we, we'll get into that as well but what does that mean like how does someone know that though this is this is more than just i'm falling for them or there's there's that excitement at the beginning of a relationship there's all kinds of hormonal uh chemicals being released and uh <laughs> and and, uh, and there's all this stuff happening within our body. How is that different than that? What you just described? So recognition. So yeah. first of all, we both felt it. And second of all, the way that we met and the synchronicities and the guidance to our union was just amazing. So I can share a little bit of that. So it, it's not that humanness, that human choice, it doesn't. So for me, we are more than just our bodies. And I'm sure you guys watching this would, would agree with that. So Barry and I, we'd both gone through relationships. I had, um, my son had, so the backstory is my son had come through on a reading about an hour away. This is where Barry lived, but I didn't know with, um, my granddaughter's mom's friend. So they got a message, they had a group reading in a, in a public setting. She got a message to me and she said, you, this is the lady's name. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go and see this lady. She lived an hour away. So she was telling me about different things, what, what was going on with me and what was going on. I'd have to travel for my um, soul part, my soul mate. And I'm like, okay. And she's telling me different things about, I was online dating and that's something I never thought I'd do or Barry. And she was describing the circumstance with which we would meet, but she, she had said, has that already happened? I'm like, no, I don't know what you mean. Anyway, transpire like months after I'd done tapping to call in my partner, I'd written a love list and I was on that helping and healing myself first. So I'd be ready. And um, when we met and we, we spoke uh, and then I was like, mm, I'm not sure. So I didn't, I kind of said, oh, well, I'm just going to leave that. I wrote my love list and then um, Barry contacted me. And when we met, the connection was just amazing. So, so much so that he had felt it, I had felt it. And then we met, we had a date the next day and I had put my wedding dress on my vision board. That was it. I was like, that's it. I just know. I just know in my soul. I know. And so he knew as well. And that the on our second day was we decided that was that was just it. We just we just knew. And so it wasn't that human because it wouldn't be something that we would normally do. He had his his guard, he was like, I'm never going to be in this long-term thing. I'm going to wait a while and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I was ready, but I didn't know who it would, would be or what it would look like. And so the, the moments that led up to our union and the guidance. So the lady that I'd had the reading with that told me about, you know, I'm going to meet, I'm going to have to travel for my soul partner actually lived around the corner from Barry's sister, which was like a stone throw away from his work. And she said, we'll have to travel. And the road that I traveled to go and see her, I've never been over that way, is the road that he traveled back and forth. And we still do because his family's over there. And so every week he would travel the same road that I traveled down to, that my son had come through to have this union. So he was kind of called in from my son. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing that. You you have a, a way of dropping these subtle I know <laughs> one liners in the conversation that I don't typically have a pen in my hand, but I'm taking notes because they're just gonna keep coming at me. And so you you nonchalantly mentioned something that is so key. And uh, I want to touch on that. You you said, as you passed through it, you mm -hmm. you were working on first healing, helping and healing your, yourself first. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me more about that, please. So my time offline was intentional. So I'd split from the seven year relationship and I was just like, okay, I'm going to help and heal myself first before I go out there and help out because I'm good at what I do, right? And people come to me naturally. And um, I just wanted to take time to see where it is that, what it is that I really wanted to bring to the world and who it is that I wanted to be. And I wanted to have it all. So I was working on me, meaning being the best version of Iona. You know, eating right, exercising, meditating, journaling, doing all the inner stuff, all the inner work and actually setting the intention of what I call now the seven, well, Barry and I call the seven freedoms. So living an intentional life means a life of freedom. I was stuck in fear. I was stuck in grief, the lower vibrations. And so within the wheel of life, you have so many areas of your life that people choose. And so within the soul legacy wheel, we decided to have the seven freedoms which means that contribution freedom, health freedom, emotional freedom, environmental freedom, relationship freedom, spiritual freedom, and financial freedom. And we call that cheers to financial freedom. And I love that. Yeah, the frequency of the cheers to financial freedom fr frequency. So the soul legacy movement is about raising your vibration. It's a cheers to financial freedom frequency. So those are the areas that I was focusing on who are my soul clients connecting with me soul to soul and us having soul recognition. I knew that there were people that I had soul contracts with, soul family, soul tribe. That is what I wanted to show up for. So I was like, how do I be the best version of me so then I can call that experience in and here we are. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and so now you and Barry have been together for how long? 19 months. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And what have yeah. you learned about, what would you say is one of the most important things you've learned about yourself in this relationship that you didn't know before? Oh my gosh. Well, I had thought that unconditional love was being shown to me, but I knew that it, after, later I knew that it, I was being taught that muscle. <laughs> so the... I learned that I can love and receive love um, equally, not like lopsided. And so I learned that to open and be expansive and not let my past and hurt, you can imagine the hurt and the pain and not let that determine my experiences in life and not to judge somebody else by the past experiences just to be open and expansive and if you ever meet Barry you'd know that he deserved that experience so I just I cracked wide open it's like life's short so um what is it that I want to have I can ask for what it is that I want and I can call in that and enjoy the journey of it and enjoy the actual experience of it if I may paraphrase you what I what I believe I just heard you say without saying the word is when you said you broke wide open, yeah. to me, what that felt like in this moment was vulnerability. Perhaps. Yeah. Yes. Perhaps yeah. maybe for the first time in your life, Unguarded. you were willing to be vulnerable. You were willing to just be who you are without the fear or worry that there would be conditions yes. behind Barry liking you or maybe even loving you. Yeah. At the soul level. Yeah. Yeah. Not, so, not, at, not at the ego level, but the soul level. Soul level. So I've been in, I've been married and I've been in relationships and, you know, you have those unions and they work for 
rhyme and reason that season, right? So I was there for them, they were there for me. But I knew deep down that that wasn't the experience that I wanted to continue to have for the rest of my lifetime. It, it was, it, things transpire and it's like, okay, you know, when you have that moment, like, is this it? And you're like, wow. And then you have that moment where you're like, is this it? It's like, wow, it is a completely different experience. It's the same words, but it's a completely different experience. And it's that pinch yourself, not because we're perfect, not because, you know, we're doing it. It is, it's that connection. And we knew that we had a bigger purpose. And so for me being here and showing up, you know, people say, oh, behind every good man is a good woman. Behind me is that man. And so I'd not ever had that as I was evolving, as I was growing, and as I was expanding on that soul level and learning about these things. The spiritual side, which many of you might have experienced, wasn't necessarily welcomed. I felt like I was being half of me. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and my work is part of the essence of me. So I, was, I don't have to compromise. I love what you just shared. Um, you know, what, what's coming forward for me now is I hear millions and millions of people. Now, I don't hear it from millions and millions of people, but no matter where I turn, no matter what conversation I pay attention to, yeah, I hear a very common thread that's, that's shared, which is relationships are hard. Yes, that's what I was drummed into from my previous relationship. There is argument. I'm like, I don't want that conflict or that I don't want my children to experience it. That's not where I want to be. And you know, we don't have that. We don't so, have that. So here's my question. Mm -hmm. Is your relationship with Barry difficult? Is it hard? It, it, it's beautiful and amazing. And there are what we call, we've decided to label um, growing pains or soul growth lessons. And they are extremely painful, but in it, we can hold hands and there might be tears. There might be but there's honesty and integrity and love. And if something is not a good fit for me, I will, I will convey that. And if something's not a good fit for him, even if that meant, look, you are walking away, you are free to go. There's not that hold, like that fear is I love you. And I love me just to want the best for, for you, for me, for our children. So it's not hard to be in union, but the lessons that you go through, the triggers when you're connected so deeply, there's gonna be stuff that triggers you. There's gonna be growth. And I feel for Barry because I was on my journey. He had no idea. <laughs> He's been very willing. And he's grown and I've grown and we reflect back and it's just so powerful. And I'm not gonna lie and say, oh no, most of the time it's kind of, the, no, it's blissful. It's so blissful. Even, even in those moments where in the last 19 months, it's like less than a hand, but they've been hard moments. But the rest of that, and it's necessary. It's, it's been necessary for our growth. And um, so much so my daughter, who's been along this journey with me, she says, mom, I can imagine you, like you guys would be great, like in-laws or something. Do you know what I mean? She's, she's 16. So for even that, to have her see us as that union forever and to have, it's just a blessing. She's been absolutely amazing. And all of the children have connected and been supportive and, we're very family orientated. So our families have merged and just, it's that group, that soul group. I love it. <laughs> so no, it's not hard for us. The, the lessons are hard. They're not, our, those lessons are not us. They're just the lessons that we need to go through. There's a difference of labeling it. Like that's you, and that's you. It's, it's not that there's a union together and it's how do we make, how do we have that expand? <laughs> In essence, <laughs> I have never shared that, but that's how I see it. That's how we both see it. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think that he would respond the same way? A million percent. He's got the most beautiful words and he's the most beautiful soul that I've ever met. Ever. Um, and the support and the love and he's very vocal and he's, he's, our values are very aligned. I don't know if you've ever heard of love languages, that's but yeah. Yeah. On, our, on our second date, I'd shared the love languages because that's what I was going through the journey. And on our second date, he'd listened to like three chapters of the love languages on the way to meet me in the car. So we knew, I know his love language, he knows mine and they're similar. I have three top priority love languages, don't ask me why, but the, our primary ones are in sync. So it's easy to love and it's easy to receive love. Yeah, it's beautiful that you just shared this because um, I, I had heard of it, but I was really not familiar with it. And I was in a, in a relationship for 30 years with my ex-wife. And when Mary and I were together not that long, we, we actually were on a date. We were sitting outside of a restaurant. Yeah. I think we were in Laguna Beach or Newport Beach, one of those two, California. Yeah. And we actually went on our phone and looked up the love languages and we just started reading it together and sharing. And what we ended up doing was we spent some decent time really honing in and learning more about what our own love languages are Yes. Because I had no idea what mine were, yeah. nor nor had Mary. And what's interesting is that going through that intimate experience together uh, gave us both permission to really practice healthy intimacy in a moment, vulnerability, get to know each other on a much deeper level just through that love language exercise. It's amazing. And, and what's happened is we did this about three and a half years ago. And it wasn't until very recently, in the last six months or less, we went back. Yeah, we did. We did a year. To revisit. And there were some shifts. There were some shifts that had taken place, mm -hmm. I believe, for both of us. I know for me, for sure. Yeah. Mary's not here to, to validate that for herself. <laughs> but it was it was beautiful to see how through the last three and a half years of continued healing and growth and learning more about myself mm -hmm. and going through the lessons, uh, all of them, my love language has shifted. Now it hasn't shifted radically, but yeah. there's been some movement, some things that were really important to me before haven't come out of a, out of mm -hmm. a very, very long relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, things have changed yeah. and, and it's all good. You know, it's, it's all beautiful. I suggest that to when I work with clients, when I'm coaching them, if they're in a relationship that they ought to, they ought to invest and, and read that book together. Um, and then really, really figure out what are their top three love languages. Or we did it in all the order of all five. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, we did, I, I suggested that actually today and we did it after a year. And the acts of service shifted for both of us. That I think that was the only one that shifted, but it shifted in accordance to our relationship because that's not our love language, but we do that anyway. So it, it had a little bit more of a meaning, but the rest of it stayed. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Because that exactly was our experience. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and so what's really beautiful about it now is that like, when I, when I go out of, when I, do an act of service for Mary. Yeah. Sometimes I'll say to her, well, sweetie, this is, this is an act of service for you. <laughs> I'll let her know. I'll, I'll kind of identify it. Now, I'm not saying it because I want her to know. I'm saying it because I want her to know. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just my humor. You know, it's, we do, it's, we do, we, yeah. we do that. We do that. It's like, look, because we're um, quite physical, and my, my top one are um, quality time, physical touch, and that's Barry's, but I've got the third one of words. And so he's always saying from the first moments that we spoke, even before we met, even before we met, we both had that feeling. Like literally we both had that feeling. It was crazy. He drove an hour for our first date and then two days later he drove another hour. And he said, your words are so powerful. And I didn't realize 
the impact of my words and things. So when we went through, and if in guys, if you're in a relationship, great. If you're not, they have a love language for singles. I went through that as well when I was single. And then when we got in union and they've got love languages for children, they've actually got one version for men too. So yeah, very powerful, very powerful stuff. So if you are watching our show on live or in replay, you got two coaches right here, right now, that are both advocating for you to take the time to read, even if you gloss over it, just focus on the five love languages. You don't have to buy the book. If, if, if finances are a little tight right now, they're all there on the internet. Just Google the five love languages. Now, here's, the, here's my reality on this. The truth is, is, I would suggest, even if you're not in a relationship now with somebody else, read the five love languages because it's an opportunity for you to really look inward and begin to understand what is important to you. So yes. as you are, as you decide you're ready to, 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 to kind of put your, yourself out there and look for or be available for a new relationship, perhaps knowing yourself greater, understanding mm -hmm. what is important to you in a little love language for yourself, that will help you align with perhaps someone who is energetically mm -hmm. uh, aligned with you. Sure. So you don't have to be in a relationship with anyone other than yourself to get to know what's important for yourself. A million percent, I, I yes, <laughs> yes to all that. I actually did tapping as well um, a few months before I met Barry and I did a love list. So when we were speaking, I was like, mm, I, I'm not sure because it was a dating site and that's not something that I wanted to ever be on. So I was like very cautious and um, I wrote the, love like the love list on the first of the month and the second of the month he came back after a week and he said oh, I'd sent you this message and I didn't want you to think I didn't care this is it so I read it and then we went out on a day and then about a month after I revealed that I'd written a love list and so I was checking this love list I was not playing around like I'd been through <laughs> two relationships I'm like I don't know if I'm going to trust my own judgment but I'm definitely going to trust this love list this is um, qualities of each area, like um, spiritual, intimacy, all the things that you'd want to have in a partner. I knew that I needed to be a vibrational match to it. So when he read it, I showed him it after about a month because like, I told him about it, but he's like, okay, can I read it now? So I said, yeah, I'm ready because I didn't want him to, it to influence, but I, he ticked off about 90% of this list. And they say, don't look for 100%. I'm like, I'm really happy right now. So he read it and Barry, not knowing exactly what that was, said, are you talking about me? I don't get it. Like, are you, what is, like he thought I had written about him. I go, no, that's the point. It's the love list. <laughs> so in combination, it was just, it was just magic. Beautiful. Yeah. You, you talked, you shared a little bit earlier about before you met Barry, the synchronicities and the fact that either he or you were riding along the same Rose. road yeah. Uh, in passing, mm -hmm. um, I hadn't met Mary until after my wife and I were separated. Mm -hmm. However, we had lived in, I had lived in California in two different cities. Oh, okay. And each city that I lived in, at that time, Mary lived in that city. Whoa. And she would she frequented the exact same retail stores, exact same they places say. that I had, mm. and we didn't meet. Yeah. And then when we sold our home and moved to the ocean in uh, Belmont Shore, California, she lived. Now Belmont Shore is a big enough area where there's many many streets, probably a hundred plus. She lived two blocks from me literally around the corner. Wow. And we had met, we had known each other. I love that. And, you know, people ask us all the time, how did we meet? And my answer hasn't changed. We're coming up on four years, uh, October 31st will be four years that we're together. And it'll be one year ago that I proposed to Mary. But my answer is still the same, which is it, it was the divine. And mm. they're like, no, really? How did you meet? I was like, 
it was the divine because if we had met any time earlier, it would not, the alignment would have been a disaster for her and for me. Uh, not that I didn't have enough disasters that I had created myself yes. leading, up to, leading up to that time that I decided to exit out of my, my, my marriage. But that would have had a very different ending than what we have today. And that's why it was, it was divine. It was divine time, not our time, because yeah. there were so many moments that we could have met and had that connection. And we didn't because it wasn't the right time, yeah. uh, but it is now. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. so I'll stop, you know, when people start, they go, no, no, really. How did you meet? They really, they want to get, they want to get the, they want to get the, the real, you know, that, that story, that, that feel good story. And you know what? my truth is my truth and it feels it feels beautiful because i spent my whole life trying to control my outcomes nice. and it worked until it didn't yes at some point trying to control every aspect of my life my life became out of control it actually inverted it flipped on me yeah and today i spend a whole lot less time trying to control the outcomes and leaning into faith not fear and that leads me to the next segment I'd like to touch on. You mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. you mentioned fear versus freedom. Yes. I'd like for you to kind of share a little bit about your perspective on how do you navigate through fear and how much does fear play in your life today versus in the past? Oh, that's a big one. Okay. So if you guys are familiar with um, Abraham Hicks or Esther Hicks and the secret and law of attraction and all that, I'm a law of vibration teacher. So one of the things that really played out for me quite heavily in the beginning of my journey was a fear of failure. I failed epically, publicly many times. I'm over it. <laughs> a fear of success because it's like that tall poppy syndrome. I was talking about this on a live the other day. Like when you're rising, it's like, who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? What are you doing? This is different. And um, fear of selling, like you feel like you're selling your style, like for your services, there's money blocks and all the rest of it. And um, if your audience are aligned with that, meaning that you're doing great things in the world that you believe that are coming in like that your gifts and then charging for that. So that was the fear. I had lots of fear. So when you are building a business as a coach, as an author, a speaker, trainer, healer, creative, then that is not the best place to build it. And so with me, I've had a lot of losses, not just my son, my father and my brother um, and friends. And um, I had, I had literally gone through a dark decade of the soul and if you are familiar with the vibration um, and we are what we attract, like radiating out what it is that we, so you imagine the lower vibration, the lowest vibration is fear and grief. And um, I was stuck in that vibration and not realizing that chaos was unfolding in my life. And it was that vibrational set point. And so freedom and love and joy and appreciation are at the highest end of that emotional scale. So there's everything in between, right? So when we are trying to manifest or call anything in in our life and we're down on the lower vibrations, sometimes we don't realize that. And so when I was offline helping and healing myself first, I was helping and healing myself emotionally. Grief is one of the deepest, darkest experiences, emotions, if you let it be. And I believe that you've got to go through that. And I still have my days. I will always be grieving, but I will, I'm able to use the experience and use my son and his life to fuel the soul legacy, just to turn what I call turn your wounds into wisdom. I heard Oprah say that in terms of fear, I actually got into when I was doing the um, number one divine intervention virtual event, I was tapping then and I moved into what I call the fearless receiving mode. So I was open to receiving. We had had enough contrast to put rockets of desire out there into the universe and just draw in what I wanted to experience. So I don't like I 
I've come on today and I'm like, okay, it will be what it will be. Jail, jail hold space for me will be good. And so I get a little bit nervous for certain things, but not a fear. I don't attach my experience in life to fear because I've been through so much. I don't sweat the small stuff. It is what it is. It will roll the way that it rolls. And us um, reach you reaching out and then me reaching out to you and saying, will you feature? And the different movement and the different energy of it that had to just fall and not everybody that I'd re reached because I had like 27 light readers at the time who were going to feature it wasn't the same format as it is now and so people were wondering what it is, what are you doing I didn't fear any of it I didn't it wasn't a failure I don't fear success I want to take this as big as it'll go and I absolutely in alignment with saying part of the intentional living code and the cheers to financial freedom frequency is me supporting uh soul guided entrepreneurs to start a movement with their message and bank 50k in 50 days i have no problem saying that but it's not just banking the money it's having all of the experiences and but we bank money vibrationally so you actually um you you practice that muscle and practice that vibration because not having the money, I didn't have the money. The post that you saw was me saying, I didn't have the money to bury my son. I had to rely on other people. My mom's amazing. So that's her grandson. So that would come, but I didn't have that. I had my own life insurance covered for like quarter of a million. I wasn't prepared for that. So I was out there trying to do my work and not being okay with receiving financial freedom. So the cheers to financial freedom frequency and the journey to that is about being good with having it all. So I don't sit in fear. I just don't sit in fear. <laughs> just, it makes no sense to me. My brain has is rewired to support me in just living and leaving my legacy. My soul why is bigger than that. It's bigger than that. I've been yeah. able to, yeah, just sit in that space. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. You mentioned Esther Hex, uh, Abraham yeah. Hex. You mentioned Oprah Winfrey. Oh who, are, who are, let's say, your 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 top three favorite oh. mentors today mm -hmm. in your journey of life? Oh my gosh, Ian Levanzan. She's an author. She she was on the Oprah Winfrey show back in the day. She used to have this phrase like, "I'm going to save myself." <laughs> that was just a, like a really big thing for me save yourself I read her books actually she was a spiritual teacher and a minister and she she ended up being on the Oprah uh, Winfrey show in a different way but back then she was absolutely very instrumental her books two of her books are on my coffee table and they stay there anybody moves them they need to put them back but she stays present um and I've given gifted her books and I said to Barry and my daughter Mia and the other day, if there's any gift that you think, oh, you know, what would she like? That would be the collection, again, of all of her books. Oprah Winfrey, just, I'm like, wow. And and Abraham, he, that is very instrumental um, in, the, in the mentors. I look to me to mentor me first, but I have that guidance and that inspiration. Um, one of the things also, I don't know if that's aligned, but this card here guides me. So that reminds me of my son. It says the divine director, intervention and purpose. So my event was called the number one divine intervention virtual event. And I came across this card, the keepers of the light, not long after, and I was drawn to it. And this for me, helps me be connected to my son. It says, a divine intervention is occurring. Know that you are being guided. Happiness is your purpose. So anything that's aligned with that, I have in my world, and anything isn't, it just bounces out. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I just posted uh, in a feed the gift. Yes. What? Is, let's talk about the gift. What? You, uh, I asked you if you had a gift that you would like to share with the community for those watching live or on replay. Um, and you, you said uh, you would love to share a gift. Yes. Uh, and so tell us a little bit about the gift that I just posted the link to. Oh, thank you. So I call it the Soul Legacy School Masterclass 
because I'm all about soul. I notice I have soul in everything that I do. <laughs> so um, the Soul Legacy School Masterclass takes you through the Cheers to Financial Freedom Frequency, what that is. And the, the seven steps for soul, what I call soul path alignment. So if you want to ignite your light work, your lifestyle and your world life, that's a place to do it, to have things be in harmony. And I really talk about um, manifesting and maintaining more soul client uh, income and soul family influence and soul tribe impact. I'm a big believer in when I helped and healed myself first, online, I wanted to make sure that I was in alignment and I was showing up fully for myself. Before I came offline, I had a persona online that was my business and a persona online that was for friends and family. When I came off, I wiped everything out, like close to 200, 2,000 people, about 200 on my, my personal and about 1,800 on my, so about 2,000, I was like, I just wiped everything out, just started from scratch. And when I was doing the number one divine intervention virtual event, uh, my guest, I had a hundred, close to a hundred, said, I can see I own a consultant on this. You're leading a movement. It was somebody that actually, um, one of my guests sent out a letter, uh, an email to, that I'd written to her list. And they said, wow, the feedback, she got amazing feedback from it. And she said, you're leading a movement. I didn't know what a, a movement was back then. So in coming back online and leading a movement then and leading a movement now, I extend the invitation. If you have a message inside of you that you want to get out in the world, then I want to support you in starting a, your movement from scratch, being in alignment with it, actually getting your gifts out online. I take you through, there's three steps and I also give some bonus gifts um, for that that soul path alignment for you to, if you are not clear on the message that you have, if you're not clear on the business model that you want to bring, if you're not clear on the, the life, how that looks and feels integrated, then that's the class for you. Beautiful. And so how they get the gift is they just click on the link. Yes. So it's a, it's a masterclass. Yeah. Beautiful. You can sign It'll up. be right there for them. It awesome. will be right there. I will be doing it. So you can watch it on replay. I will be doing it live at the end of the month, at the end of the season. I'll be doing it twice at the end of the season for the Soul Legacy TV podcast and radio show. Um, and we have the group where you can come in and ask any questions. In it, what I wanted to do, I talk about list building, right, Jay? I'm not into come onto my list. I'm very into, I'm a tough love trainer. So I will have you be in inspired action. So if you come into my world, be ready to live and leave your soul legacy. It's not about come onto the list. So I do have private Q&A in there. I do have bonus gifts in there. It's not you're going to be passive and somebody's going to be saying, oh, do this, do that. You're going to feel in to what you feel called to do and bring that out into the world. Beautiful. Yeah. Iona, you're, you're, you're not going to believe it, but we are coming up on the hour. <laughs> uh, I'd like to ask you, yes. how do you feel right now having, uh, prior to the show, leading up to, um, how does it feel now at the back end of the hour for you? Do you know what? It actually feels the same because I knew that you'd hold space for me. I knew that this is just where I was supposed to be to have this conversation in divine time. I'm really excited. I've had a, a really amazing day. And part of it was just being here. And you can't predict what it is going to look like. But I am someone who segment intends. That's an Abraham Hicks thing. You, you know, you're, you're visualizing and you're imagining actually so you set the intention. So I knew it was going to be epic. So yeah, yeah just as excited. I was really excited then. And I'm just as excited now. I'd like to invite you to take a, a few moments here to perhaps put a pretty bow on the show and uh, share some closing thoughts. Oh, okay. So thank you for spending this time with me and allowing me to share my story with you. Um, one of the biggest things for me, if you are on a journey and you've had any obstacle, any challenge, any grief, any fear, anything that you know 
um, is out of alignment with where you really want to go, I invite you to go within, get still and connect. You, your, your soul path will unfold even if it doesn't look like it's unfolding in the way that you want it to because you're holding on to it. Trust it. No matter what has gone in in your life, I've had a lot of losses. I've had a lot of, I've been bankrupt, homeless, divorced. I had my son, my brother, my father pass. Crazy stuff. Know that you're not alone and you can do this. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Iona, uh, I'd like to uh, share my own closing thoughts on, on this show. First and foremost, I thank you for joining me, having the courage to step into the studio after having taken a hiatus for four years. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back, my friend. Um, I also want to take a moment to just acknowledge you. Uh, as you shared today, you've gone through, we all have our experiences in life. We all have these moments of tremendous uh, catastrophic events, pain, sorrow, traumas, experiences that define, potentially define our life. And we get sucked into, potentially get sucked into those experiences, those traumas, those wounds, those catastrophic events that then define our life for whatever time we have left. And what radiates through you is this incredible, absolutely beautiful being, uh, Iona Mead. You are an absolutely beautiful woman um, on so many levels. Uh, it's just, it, I have such respect and admiration at any given time, there, there are many things that you've gone through that you could have thrown in a towel. You could have, you could have just thrown in a towel and just lived the life of a victim and just been a, been a woe is me kind of person. And uh, instead you have, you went in, you went inward. You, you turned off the outside chatter, you turned off the outside static, you detached in a healthy way so that you could do the work to grieve not only the loss of the passing of your son, but also really the passing of, of who you were to come out on the other side, uh, the person that you are today, which is just uh, an absolutely beautiful soul. And, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful to be able to call you friend today and know mm -hmm. that in any given moment, if I'm in need and if I have, uh, if I'm stuck in a, in a part of my life in a moment, I can reach out to you and I know you'll be there for me. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. thank you for that. And uh, if you're watching us in this moment, know this, that no matter what, no matter what you have faced, no matter what you are going through, emotional, mental, physical, or spiritual hurt or pain, there are ways to get yourself out of it. It doesn't happen just through prayer. Praying harder is not gonna get us, get us there. We have to be willing to have the courage to take massive action through baby steps. We don't have to do it all in one day. We just have to be willing to show up, have the courage, have faith. And the greatest courage is the courage to change, is to do the work, to go inward and learn who you are at your core and to work through and walk through the process of healing. You're witnessing two people here today, Iona and myself, that hit some significant, significant bottoms in life. And both of us have been willing to do the work to show up as you've said so eloquently, helping and healing yourself first. And through that experience, you're able to now inspire others that change is possible. We just have to be willing. And with that, thank you for joining us on Real People, Real Stories, Raw. We will be live this Sunday with Isis coming in from Maui, Hawaii. I don't, I, I'll post the time I haven't, gone back to see what time the show is going live, but uh, it'll be this Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us and have an incredible weekend. 
do some self-care, no matter what you got going on, put down that to-do list, take 30 minutes, take three hours, take two hours, just take it and uh, do something for yourself. Go inward and do some healing. And with that, thank you for joining us. Have an incredible weekend. Take care.